in the wisdom of Solomon, we have a little verse that appears out of nowhere, and it's a little bit out of context. Blessed is the wood by which righteousness comes. Blessed is the wood by which righteousness comes. It's one of those little hints in all of the Hebrew literature that the cross is the center of the universe. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Last night I talked about how the new covenant was established through a commandment, love one another, and a meal. And although Jesus offered the bread and the wine to us as a sign, the real sacrifice necessary for the covenant happens here, tonight, today, as we remember the cross. A covenant, in the biblical sense, required a death, either an animal or a person. Long before this, long before this, God put man and woman in a garden. And it was good. Andy Crouch, the editor of Christianity Today, said that the Bible begins in a wild garden, but ends in a wonderful city. The Bible goes from good to extraordinary. Our trouble is, we read the Bible from Genesis 3 to Revelation 19. We go from bad to worse, from the fall to the judgment. And so we develop this tendency, and you see it all over the place, of wanting to go back to the garden where things were once good. And this takes all kinds of forms. We're cursed with the backward glance, just like Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. Wanting to go back to the garden, wanting to go back to the book of Acts, for some, wanting to go back to Kelvin's Geneva. For others, going back to Byzantium. For still others, wanting to go back to Wesley's, preaching on the streets. And for some of us, heaven help us, we want to go back to Egypt. All the while, the Father is leading us forward. The Psalms say that the Lord leads us with his eye. The Lord is leading us forward with a forward glance. God is always calling us to move forward to something better. Jesus came to establish a kingdom. And in the House of Prayer in Boston, more than 10 years ago, the Lord gave me this little phrase, the kingdom is always advancing, never retreating. The kingdom is always moving forward toward a city with no lights and no temple because the lamb is the temple and the light. In the garden, there was a man and a woman. And there were two trees. There was a tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the man and the woman chose to violate their relationship with God and obtain this knowledge. And so they were cut off from the tree of life. When we read the Bible, it's clear the story goes pretty bad pretty fast. Next generation murder, then adultery, then war, then calamity and conflict, and everything that goes with those things. Even so, in the midst of all that, murder and mayhem, there's a glimmer and a looking forward to something else. Abraham makes a covenant with God, 
And then God makes a covenant with Abraham and says, take your son up on the mountain. And Abraham offers Isaac. A lamb is slain at Passover. The tribes of Israel are instructed to build their camp around the tabernacle. The small tribes at the top and the big tribes at the bottom and their encampment forms a cross in the desert. Ezekiel sees an angel who takes a quill pen and marks on the forehead the sign of the cross of every person that God is going to save. David in Psalms 22 and Psalm 69, and in Isaiah 53, as we heard tonight, describe in stunning detail the events of the crucifixion. One a thousand years beforehand, the second 800 years. Later on, Paul would say that the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. We live in a cross-shaped universe. And throughout the life of Jesus, as the events of the Gospels move forward, the kingdom advanced until this point. And the point was we find ourselves again in a garden. We're in a wild garden again. Only this time, the garden is not very nice. This is not any place anyone would want to get back to. It's hell on earth, where men are tortured and people behave worse than beasts. And in the middle of this garden is a tree. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And on this tree hangs an innocent man. And near this tree, just like in the garden before, there's a man and a woman. And Jesus looks down and he calls the, her woman, the woman there, woman with a capital W. John is making a connection. Jesus did this once before. It was at a birth. It was the birth of his ministry. Woman, it's not my time. And at her insistence, with a little push, Mary initiates the first miracle. And Jesus turned water into wine. Mary, in John's gospel, is not a woman. She is woman, capital W. She is Eve. She is the mother of a new creation. She said yes to the angel and undid Eve's yes to the serpent and gave birth with water and blood. She gave birth to the ministry of Jesus by turning water into the blood of the grape. And now she is here standing at the foot of the cross. And we're waiting for another birth. And now Jesus looks down at her and John and he says, Woman, capital W, behold your son. Eve was the mother of all the living. And Mary is now the mother of all the redeemed. And he looks at John, the one who will be entrusted with imparting to the next generation, after the apostles, everything that Jesus taught them in private. And he says, Behold your mother. John is now family. He's not just a follower. He's family. John is now adopted into the family of David, the family of Jesus, the family of his new creation. And then Jesus dies. 
And at this moment, a soldier takes a lance and he pierces the side of Jesus. And once again, blood and water flows. And out of the temple of his body, the container of the Holy Spirit, the container is rent. And at that moment, the curtain in the temple, the Holy of Holies, is torn. And the dwelling of God is now with men, with water and blood, the Spirit of God is released. And at this moment, the new covenant is ratified, and Mary and John are sprinkled with water and with blood. Just like Moses sprinkled the people and the book of the covenant and the vessels of the tabernacle with water and blood. These two are the first born of the new creation. They are baptized and washed in the blood. They are the new temple, the new people of Israel, the new family of God, and they will be among the first to be filled with the same Spirit that filled Jesus. The Holy Spirit that left Adam and Eve is now released from Jesus, the new Adam, to Mary, the new Eve, who stands next to the open side of Jesus, just like the open side of Adam where God took a rib and made Eve, and they together embrace a new adopted son. And that son is beloved. That's his name. John, beloved. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John was the Son, not born by natural means, but by water and the blood and the Spirit. And here, John says something very interesting. He says something that I think actually is strange at that moment. He says, I am an eyewitness to the piercing. And I tell you this, so you will believe. He says it about the piercing. He saw the evidence of the death but he also saw the evidence of the birth. And the reason I know this is because he wrote the gospel. And before he wrote the gospel, he wrote a letter. Before This is before the gospel. And in that letter, John says, This is he who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ, not with water only, but with water and blood and the Spirit is the witness, because the Spirit is the truth. These are the three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And they all agree. That's from 1 John chapter 5. John witnessed the birth of the church. And in that moment, we are in a garden again. This time, there's not a sexual connection between the man and the woman. This connection is between a mother and a son. This relationship is family and adoption and wholeness. This covenant is ratified. The power of the Holy Spirit is released. It's a new covenant. We're not left as orphans. But the Holy Spirit in us, as Jesus promised, because of this birth, will make it possible for all of us who come to him to be born again by water and the Holy Spirit. This water and this blood will bring us into connection with the Father. This tree that was the source of death the tree of injustice and accusation, the tree of cursing, the tree of abandonment, of nakedness and shame, the tree of bitterness, 
this tree in the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, has now become the tree of life. Blessed is the wood by which righteousness comes. <laughs>